Welcome to Unit 4, Video 3, Atomic Theory. By the end of this video, you should understand the law of definite proportions. You should understand the law of multiple proportions. You should understand Dalton's atomic theory. And you should be able to calculate percent composition for a compound. Before we talk about more modern ideas of the atom, let's go way back to the very first model of the atom. First of all, what's an atom? An atom is the smallest particle of an element that retains the chemical identity of that element. In other words, if you break down a sample uh, until you get to the smallest part that still maintains the properties of that sample, you have an atom. Atoms were first developed way back in 450 BC by the Greek philosopher Democritus. Here's some pictures of Democritus. He was often called the laughing philosopher. Uh, as you can see from these pictures. And it's actually not because he was just a jolly fellow. It's actually because he thought humans were generally kind of stupid, and so he would often laugh at other people. Um, but in any case, he was the first person to develop the idea that at an atom was a thing. Let's fast forward now all the way to the 1700s. In the 1700s, the law of definite proportions was put forward. This law has to deal with compounds. Remember, compounds are chemically combined atoms of different elements. So it was noticed that when we looked at compounds, they always contain the same proportions of the elements that make them up. In other words, if we analyze the mass of a sample of water, it turns out that we always have 88.9% of the mass of the sample being oxygen, and 11.1% of the sample being hydrogen. No matter how much water you have, no matter where it comes from in the world, as long as it's a pure sample of water, 88.9% of its mass will be oxygen and 11.1% of its mass would be hydrogen. Likewise, if we combine samples of hydrogen and oxygen, it was noticed that it was always necessary for two parts of hydrogen and one part of oxygen to form one part of water vapor or gaseous water. Notice here we have two equal sized balloons of hydrogen and one balloon of oxygen forming one balloon of water. If we doubled the amount of hydrogen, we also had to double the amount of oxygen and we would make double the amount of water. Still, the proportions are the same. Two parts hydrogen to one part oxygen gives you one part water. If you tried to use different proportions, the same result still occurred. If you tried to use two parts hydrogen and two parts oxygen, only one part of the oxygen will combine with the two parts hydrogen to give you one part water. The other extra oxygen will simply be left over after the reaction is complete. This led John Dalton to develop his law of multiple proportions. So Dalton noticed that when two elements, let's call them A and B, combine to form two different compounds, the masses of B that combine with one gram of A are always a whole number ratio. So that can sound a little confusing. Let's look at an example. He noticed that if you look at, say, carbon monoxide, which is a compound using carbon and oxygen, and compare that to carbon dioxide, a compound containing carbon and oxygen again, if you look at their masses, for every one gram of carbon in carbon monoxide, there was 1.33 grams of oxygen. For every one gram of carbon in carbon dioxide, there was 2.67 grams of oxygen. If you look at the ratio of 2.67 to 1.33, we get a whole number ratio. This might not seem too surprising to us now, but remember Dalton didn't know at the time that carbon monoxide was made up of one atom of carbon and one atom of oxygen or that carbon dioxide was made up of one atom of carbon and two atoms of oxygen. So this was a surprising result. In 1803, John Dalton took all of these observations and put them together to uh, constitute his atomic theory. Atomic 
theory has a couple of points. We'll list them here. First, elements are made up of tiny particles called atoms. This is something we've talked a lot about in class. Second, all atoms of an element are identical, but they are different from the atoms of any other element. In other words, every hydrogen atom is like every other hydrogen atom. But every hydrogen atom is different from every oxygen atom. Third, atoms are not created or destroyed in chemical reactions. You may recall that this is the law of conservation of mass, or the law of conservation of matter, which we've discussed at length before. Finally, atoms of one element can combine with atoms of another element to form compounds. Again, compounds are pure substances that are chemical combinations of atoms of more than one element. As it turns out, there are some problems with Dalton's atomic theory. One of the most obvious problems is, if all atoms are just round spheres like marbles, how is it possible that they behave differently from each other? But you know, it was 1803. He did this brings us to the last objective for this video. Since we've already established that elements always combine in the same ratios to form compounds, and that compounds always have the same proportion by mass of different elements, we can calculate the percent composition of a compound. The percent composition compares the mass of one element of a compound to the mass of the whole compound. Just like any percentage is the part divided by the whole, here we're dividing the mass of one element to the mass of the whole compound. This is often used to identify an unknown compound. Here's an example. When a 200 gram sample of water is analyzed, it is found that 22 grams of that sample is hydrogen and 17.8 grams of that sample is oxygen. We can calculate the percent composition here. Let's start with hydrogen. We know that 22.2 grams of this sample are hydrogen. That's the mass of the part. The whole sample has a mass of 200 grams. That's the mass of the whole. And of course, like any percentage, we want to multiply by 100. Do the math, and you find that this compound is 11.1% hydrogen. Repeating this procedure for oxygen, we have 177.8 grams of oxygen for every 200 grams of water, or of our unknown compound, excuse me. Multiply that by 100%, and you find that this compound is 88.9% oxygen. Of course, I've already given away the surprise here, but we can confirm that this compound is water, since we've already seen way back at the beginning of this video that water is always 11% hydrogen and 89% oxygen. Here's another problem to try on your own. Pause the video here, and when you come back, I'll display the answer. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we looked at the law of definite proportions, which said that elements always combine in the same proportions in a given compound. Then we looked at the law of multiple proportions, which said that when you compare the mass of one element to one gram of a different element in different compounds, there was always a whole number ratio. We gave the example of carbon monoxide, CO, and carbon dioxide, CO2. Then we looked at Dalton's atomic theory. And finally, we learned to calculate percent composition for a compound, where we divide the mass of one element in the compound by the mass of the entire compound.